Hi everyone, this is Midwinter Minis, my name's Guy, and this video has been kindly sponsored by Audible. Uh, yeah, hello, it's me. Uh, probably a little bit of a disjointed video this week, but hopefully it should be quite entertaining nonetheless. Last week's video, where I painted those awesome second edition Dark Angels, took me ages. So this week, I want to keep things simple by building the torso of my Warlord Titan. I say simple, the thing's enormous, but we'll see how it goes. Last week, I attended the Warhammer World Anniversary up in Nottingham, my first time there since the before times. I had great fun meeting loads of awesome Games Workshop crew, cosplayers, and other content creators, and chatting to loads of people who recognize me, which is weird but cool. Also, my personal painting hero Louise gave me a little gift, which I'll show you later. Now, I may have slightly cheated on my no new minis promise, but come on, they're limited edition. One of the cool things that came in the goodie bag that all attendees took home was this set of art prints. And what's the first thing inside? The Warlord Titan. <laughs> it must be an omen. Time to get out that big old box and carry on building this ridiculously tall miniature. So the last time we just finished building the Titan's legs, the structural part anyway, I'm keeping all the armor panels separate to make it a bit easier to paint them later on. Okay, tools out. We've got the hobby saw, knife, file, and nippers, but I also have a new toy to play with. Ant gave me the Citadel Scraper as a gift. It feels really nice in the hand, to be fair. It's a nice bit of kit, and it made short work of the mold lines and slips on the torso. I masked up to stop myself breathing in any of that nasty resin dust, and went to work. You might have noticed a few bits of new furniture in the background, and I'll show you more of that once this body's built. I spent about four or five hours on this tidy up stage. Now, I'm not going to bore you to death with all the details of the cleanup job, as it's pretty much the same as the previous four Titan videos. Scrape mold lines, file and flatten gate connection points, riveting, riveting stuff. But I did almost make a huge mistake. I was about to snip these little tags off the front of the engine vent things, but thankfully I looked at the instructions and noticed it was actually part of the model and not a resin gate. Phew. While I was working away at this, I listened to the audio drama Alien River of Pain on Audible, who also happened to be the sponsor of this video. It's not a full-length audiobook, more like an old-school radio drama with music and sound effects and a complete voice cast. It's only about five hours long, so I was able to listen to the whole thing while cleaning up the Titan's body, and I really enjoyed it. It's no secret that I really love the Alien franchise anyway, so it was interesting to see that Audible have loads of Alien audiobooks and dramas included in their subscription, so you don't even need to use your credits on them. You can just binge all of them whenever you want. River of Pain is basically set between Alien and Aliens, fleshing out the story of how colonists were now terraforming Acheron, where Ripley and the crew first encountered the Xenomorphs. You get to know Newt and her family, and understand how such a terrible fate befell the colony in a perfect setup to the second film. The voice cast is amazing. Newt sounds just like the girl from the film, even down to the scream. Ripley is bang on, and kind of weirdly, the classic heartless Wayland Utani antagonist sounds exactly like Alex from 52 Miniatures. A alien? Never heard of it. As I said, there's tons of included stuff like this, on top of whatever audiobooks you want to spend your credits on too. If you want to try Audible out for yourself, follow the link in the description, that's audible.com slash midwinterminis, or text midwinterminis to 500-500 and get a free trial on me. Now the model parts are all nice and trim and tidy, time to get all this resin mess sucked up. Next, I'm going to need to wash these parts to get the mold release residue off them so the glue and paint will stick to them. And in a totally bizarre coincidence, I hear some squeaking outside the front door, and then this letter was hand delivered. So it turns out the previous tenants have a mail redirect set up, but they've been ignoring their final reminders for their water bill. Huh. Anyway, a few frantic phone calls later, and it was promptly switched back on. So now I've got good old running water back again, a thorough scrub for each piece, and then we can start building. The first steps in the manual involve boxing in the main torso, but before I do that and close everything off, this is the time to add magnets to the waist joint if I don't want the whole model to just be static. Now I don't really care if it moves or not to be honest, it's a model, not an action figure, but it would be handy to be able to detach the torso from the legs when I need to inevitably transport it. As I mentioned in the Titan Fist video, I picked up some pretty chunky neodymium magnets, 20mm by 3mm, each with a 3kg pulling force. In theory, two of these stacked on either side of the waist joint should easily be able to hold the legs to the body by just lifting the torso. I mean, 
sounds kind of dangerous, but <laughs> that's what you're here for, right? I can have a set of magnets sitting on top of the resin inside the torso housing. I'll just need to use this Forstner drill bit to drill out a little groove for them to sit in. Not all the way through though. Now on the waist joint at the top of the legs, I do the same, marking out the centre with my knife and then carefully drilling down so there's a quarter inch deep hole, enough to fit the two magnets. I was hardly putting any pressure on the legs here, just letting the weight of the drill do its thing really and taking my time. And after checking I got the polarities on the magnets right, I added a bit of Gorilla Glue to both sections to hold them in place, and then clamped them while the glue dried and expanded. To stop it sticking to the clamps, I also stuck a bit of masking tape to the top of the magnet. And after a few hours, tape off, and boom, nice and solid. And it still turns. But can you lift the legs up with just the strength of the magnets? <laughs> oh yes, magnets really are magic. Right, time to actually get the main torso housing together. I scored the contact points where the parts will go together with the tip of my knife to add a bit more surface area for the glue to stick to. And speaking of glue, I'm going to be trying out Gorilla Gel Super Glue on the recommendation of quite a few experienced big resin model builders in the comments of previous videos. It took me embarrassingly long to realise you can't just wait for this stuff to run out. It's way too thick, so you need to bang the bottle tip down to get the glue into the nozzle, and then you're good to go. So that's one side locked in, then the rear wall, and then the other side, popping a bit of glue on the contact points at the sides too. Once the parts were together, I also dripped a bit of regular fluid superglue in between the cracks just to make sure this section was really stuck tight. The rear has this weird overhanging section that elongates the torso and comes in two parts. You need to stick these two halves together and then manhandle them into place behind the sides. The only problem was, the fit was a couple of millimetres too tight, maybe due to the large resin sections curving very slightly, but even a tiny little curve will ruin the fit. It's quite easy to fix though, I just warmed up the whole build so far with the hairdryer. This will soften the resin a little bit, not enough to melt the details or anything, but enough to gently push it into shape without it cracking. Once it was a bit warmer and a bit more malleable, I got the glue on and slotted the overhang into place. And yes, I do have a Hello Kitty hairdryer, thanks for noticing. Now, looking at how huge this model is in the manual, and keeping in mind all of the weight will be dependent on how well these sections are connected to that base plate, I reckon a couple of subtly placed screws would put my mind at rest. I checked to make sure it wouldn't accidentally ruin any detail on the outside, marked out my drill point, drilled a little pilot hole, and then gouged out a groove for the screw head to sit flush inside the model, and then screwed it in. Now you can see that it has pushed a little bit of the resin on the inside, but that's fine. I was aiming the screw towards that side. As long as the outside still looks nice, I'm fine. I also drilled a little pilot hole and gently hammered a pin to lock in the sides to the overhanging sections. And yeah, I'll admit this was a bit risky I suppose. Resin models don't take too kindly to being hammered. Maybe a more traditional model pinning would have been more sensible, but what's life without a bit of chaos? Now I'm happy that base section is nice and solid, let's get these huge side panels glued on. Again, scoring the contact points, and then a nice coating of gel superglue everywhere it'll touch, and slot it on. And the other side, lovely. Ah, it's looking pretty cool now, really starting to take shape, and that shape is bloody huge. Let's get this massive front panel in place. I warmed the whole thing with a hairdryer again, just to make sure it fits snugly together glue on, slot it in place, and clamp to keep it nice and tight while it sets. Now there's a couple of very small gaps in the assembly here and there, less than a millimetre sure. You can only really notice them because you can see the light coming through, but I suppose once it's closed off they'll be quite hard to notice. If there are any really obvious bits that end up bugging me, I might come back with a bit of milliput later to close them off. Now speaking of closing it, let's get the carapace in place. Nice. This looks so cool. Almost done, the last thing we need to do is add the big exhaust sections. The exhaust vents go on the back first, and then once they're in place, the holes they created at the back of the torso are plugged up with these cool looking cover plates. The rest of the exhaust is made up of two parts, the intake at the front, and then these big ridges. I combine them together, and then glued them on. 
<laughs> this looks totally amazing. Anyway, I wasn't going to add them just yet, but let's quickly stick on these stabilizer things at the side of the hips, because there's a small chance these might catch at the top of the thighs if I messed up the posing on the legs. Well, oh, nice. They slot in really nice and snug. A quick clap before the moment of truth, and here we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jesus, this thing is huge. So yeah, it looks like those stabilizers will just catch at the top of the thigh. But there's a little flat section that sticks out at the bottom of the stabilizer that I could quite easily plane off to stop that happening. It's less than a millimeter causing that contact point after all. Wow, look at this thing, it's ridiculous. A vision in resin. And believe it or not, it's gonna get even taller because I still need to assemble and attach the Apocalypse missile launches. But I'll do that in another video, probably at the same time I build the arm joints and attach the rest of the weapons. So remember when I said my painting hero, Louise, gave me a little present? Well, here it is. A teeny tiny Contempt of Dreadnought from 1991, which was used in the small scale version of 40K called Space Marine, later renamed Epic. Yes, it's totally adorable, but also it's interesting to note that this is the largest and the smallest mech model that Games Workshop have ever produced, as far as I'm aware, standing right next to each other. That's pretty cool, right? I am definitely going to paint up this handsome little fella in a future video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it. And, you know, like the rest of the Titan, obviously. So, uh, want to see my new cabinets? Let me just quickly thank the newest members of the Midwinter Minis Patreon family, and we'll do just that. Tommy Two Showers, Pedantic Vampire, Zizek, Brimrose the Coyote, George Ewans, Kieran Evans, Jamie T, Brujo Lujo, Kelton Rance, Dimitri Theodoropoulos, Warlord Fritz, Josh Bushel, Leslie Taylor, Philip Matteucci, Seth Squatch, Orclad Mins 2020, and Falcon Kirby. Okay, so here's the new stuff. I felt like my storage was already getting a bit full, and pretty much all of my painted minis were still in plastic boxes and hidden in these busily drawers, so I ordered a few more bits from Ikea. I got these two Flister box shelves, pretty easy to put together, and Nessa supervised to make sure I was doing everything right. But they're also narrow enough to fit up on this weird lip next to the other black unit they already have. These are already filling up pretty fast though. I also got a couple of the classic Detolf display cabinets to get my painted minis out. They are pretty cheap as far as glass cabinets go, but man, they are a real pain in the bum to put together. So now I've got the rest of my Orc army, my Chaos Space Marines, Nurgle Demons, and a few Start Collecting boxes all painted up and other random bits and bobs, nods and ends that I've painted for videos too. Yeah, I know that might seem a bit random, but I'm pretty happy with how the new studio space is shaping up, and I thought you might like to see it too. And speaking of the new studio, and this might seem even more random, but back when I signed the lease on this place, I actually got help from a fan and supporter of the channel to check over the small print to make sure I wasn't signing my soul away. And no exaggeration here, it was the most prompt professional service that I think I've ever had with legal assistance, and I promised to give him a shout out. So thank you Jonathan at Watson Ramsbottom. Honestly, if you need legal representation in the UK, check them out. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Well, that was kind of a wild ride of random topics, huh? I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to grab your free Audible trial on me at audible.com slash midwinterminis, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Snake bite leather.